Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a Will I Bite video and of course I have my little baby. This is Teddy. He is our puppy. Well, he's not a puppy. He's like three going on four, going on being a pain in the butt. But I love having him here when we film. So he is here in case anyone is looking for Teddy. Also, he is doing a lot better if you were following me on Instagram. He actually has a abnormal vertebrae and it was inflamed a couple weeks ago and he was in a lot of pain and I was so worried for him but he's actually fine so that's the update on that and then also if you follow me on Instagram you know our friend is here from Sweden so we've been having lots of fun with him and if you are not subscribed or following me on Instagram definitely go ahead and do so I have a small little giveaway going on it should be ending pretty soon but if you guys still have the chance definitely go ahead and check me out on there Today I'm filming a Will I Bite video. You guys know I love filming these videos and I'm so excited to talk to you about new makeup releases. So without further ado, let's get into it. So you guys, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. I like to use Trend Mood to get all my newest makeup updates. So I'm filming this on a Sunday night and I'm hoping this will go up tomorrow. So as of right now, the latest thing we're seeing is that Sugar Pill is coming out with something new. Looks like it's gonna be a bunch of sparkly eyeshadows, I'm gonna guess, and it says it'll be available July 16th. So that's not too long. I know a lot of people are doing No By July, something that LS started. So if you guys are participating, definitely let me know down in the comments. I personally don't think No Buys are for me. I feel like I'm more of a just try to buy what I need to kind of person. I tried to do a No Buy when I was in Sri Lanka and failed miserably at it, so I'm just not ready to do, <laughs> do a no buy yet. But anyway, so this is really cool because I've been wanting to try Sugar Pill for a while now. Everyone swears their matte shadows are like the best matte shadows in the makeup game and have been for a long time. Unfortunately, they are pretty pricey shadows, so I don't know, I'm waiting for a sale. I'm hoping they'll do something for 4th of July. A lot of the shades are also out of stock, so I just really haven't been tempted to put together one of their single like eyeshadow palettes, but we'll see what this new item is as well. I'm just very, very curious. Let me know what you guys think of Sugar Pill. Are they worth the hype? This other thing I see on here is Ulta Beauty is collaborating with Love Melissa Michelle for the second time. Now you guys won't probably believe how ridiculous I am, but I bought the first palette. I wanna see if I can find it. I bought her first collab with Ulta and I have been meaning to review this on my channel forever, you guys. I swatch the tester in my local Ulta and thought it was amazing. And usually Ulta does buy to get to free on their items. So what ended up happening was I went to Ulta with a bunch of girlfriends and we purchased four of these palettes. So each of us ended up getting a palette for $10 or so. And I think everyone else that bought it has used it. Mine, as you can see, is in perfect condition because I just haven't gotten around to testing it. So it's kind of embarrassing that they're coming out with part two. I don't know, maybe I should just do a giveaway for that palette because I don't feel like I'm ever going to get around to testing it, but I did think from swatching the tester in store that it was beautiful. So I have a feeling this one is going to be just as gorgeous as well. This time it looks like they are doing a cheek palette, some lip duos, as well as a lip liner and an eyeshadow palette. So this looks really beautiful. I haven't watched her channel in quite some time, but yeah, I love the shade. She chose like a more purple palette this time. And it seems like there's also some fun shimmers. So yeah, I think this is cool. I love that everything kind of fits in one palette, which it makes it a really great on the go palette. Like I said, I bought this with three other friends and I think it's cool because, you know, not everyone has as much makeup as I do. And I think it's nice that you can kind of go to one palette for everything uh, because most people don't own like 10, 20 palettes. So yeah, I think that is a really cool collab and it says that it'll be available online on July 5th and then in stores on July 22nd. Now this trend mood post, I'm so bummed that I missed. I only saw it earlier when I had stopped my car and I was just about to go into Walmart and I wanted to check out trend mood and JD Glow Cosmetics restocked some of their metallic liquid gel liners. These are $10 each. I didn't even know these existed until I saw a picture 
on the Instagram account of Melissa Gold. She's actually an Australian YouTuber and she is so sweet. I talked to her on Instagram quite a bit. I'll go ahead and see if I can find a picture of the eye look she did with these gel liners. It just looks so like minimal and hip. I love the little eye look she created with it. So yeah, now I really want these, but by the time I looked on their website, almost all the shades I wanted were sold out. So I was pretty disappointed. They do have a bundle. I wish that was in stock because I would just like to buy the whole bundle. Uh, but alas, I missed it. So hopefully I will see a restock from them pretty soon and I can get my hands on those. Now it looks like Charlotte Tilbury is coming out with a, a gold bar highlighting palette. Now it looks like there's going to be three shades of highlighters in this palette and I must say it does look very beautiful. I remember when her gold bar highlighter came out and it was so spendy. A lot of people were kind of complaining about the price of that highlight. I believe it is still available for sale on Beautylish.com if you guys wanted to pick up the original one. I feel like I'm going to try my best. I mean I don't feel the need to purchase this but also I feel like a lot of stuff I tell you guys I'm not going to buy and then I end up buying it. So that's kind of a problem as well but yeah I feel like I'll be able to resist this palette even though Charlotte Tilbury is something I want to try this year. I'm really going to try and wait to see if they'll come to Sephora. Otherwise I might place an order on Beautylish. I haven't decided yet but I don't think I'll be buying this highlighter palette because I have a feeling it's going to be very very pricey. We got a little sneak peek that Jeffree Star is coming out with a setting powder. I feel like everything of course happens in trends and I know that like the highlighter trend is like a trend that started that hasn't seemed to die yet and of course like the warm eyeshadow palettes is also a trend that hasn't died yet but right now I feel like setting powders are just like you know everywhere they're blowing up hourglass of course the Becca one um, the new one by Huda that's supposed to be coming out and now Jeffree Star so I don't know when this is coming out I have a feeling a lot of people will be eyeing that I personally have said I'm not buying any more setting powder. The Hourglass one is so good to me. I just want to use it and not buy any more. But yeah, I think it's interesting that so many brands are doing setting powders and also ColourPop, duh. ColourPop just launched some setting powders in the pressed and powder form. So yeah, it's so interesting to see all these setting powders all of a sudden like super trendy right now. So the new ColourPop Make Up Your Mind palette is now available for purchase. So I got mine for free when they launched the foundations that they came out with. So I got it and uh, I know now you can buy this so that you don't have to like buy spend like $30 or something to get that for free. Personally, I haven't even put it on my eyes yet. The formula does feel good. They're all shimmer shades. I know the one shade that looks like a yellow, like a lot of people thought it looked like a yellow. Um, but honestly, once I got the palette, I feel like it just looks like a yellow gold. Um, so it's not like a matte yellow or anything. If anything, it's like a shimmery yellow gold. So hopefully that helps some of you guys. I swatched it in my haul video for the month of May and June. So if you want to see swatches, definitely check that out. Okay, so I haven't talked about this on my channel yet. Becca collab with Chrissy Teigen for the second time. I bought the first collaboration when they did the palette, but I actually ended up taking it back because I felt like it was too similar to my Jaclyn Hill palette. And I swear, I have so many highlighters. It's like getting a little ridiculous. Um, at first, I was like, nope, I don't want it. I definitely don't want lip glosses because it's not a product I tend to use a lot. I have a few lip glosses. I don't need any more. Body Glow or whatever they're calling it, the body oil. Sounds interesting, but I don't really need it. I feel like, you know, I have other products that are going to help me glow. And then, of course, the Endless Bronze and Glow Compact. Now, at first I was like, nope, I don't want it. But I feel like for some reason, I don't know if I'm right about this, but I have a feeling that this might suit my skin tone. So I did actually buy it on Sephora when it became available and I'm going to try it out and see. So look for a little video or something featuring that if you guys are interested in seeing if it's going to be suitable for tan skin. I have a feeling it's going to be really beautiful. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I didn't really need it, but I couldn't say no. I was so interested in it. Here is another big summer launch. Fenty Beauty is launching the Moroccan Spice eyeshadow palette. They're also doing a 
all of our eye brush, a tapered blending brush, a longwear liquid eyeliner, a pro filter amplifying eye primer. So they're adding a few different things to their line. I think the star of the whole show is the eyeshadow palette. I do think it is beautiful. It is really, really beautiful, but is it anything brand new? Definitely not for me. It's one of those palettes with a pop of blue. And if you guys, I'm sure all of you have seen Thrifty Beauty page, her video on the pop effect. This is kind of what it is. It basically reminds me of a hybrid of the modern renaissance mixed with the soft glam palette and a pop of blue. I think if this had come out a few uh, months prior to the soft glam palette, it might have been even something that I was drawn to, but I just feel like I have this palette over and over again and with the $59 price tag I just can't justify picking it up right now so I'm gonna pass on that for right now let me know if you guys bought it though because I'm so so curious to know what you guys' thoughts are on that new formula I don't think we've had any matte shadows from her so I'm interested to hear what people have to say about the formula this is so cute you guys I'm so obsessed with this little vault this is the pride rainbow highlighter vault from Marc Jacobs. It's $125 and it includes all their highliner um, eyeliners. Now I'm actually not a fan of this formula but I think if you like color and if you you know wanted something kind of fun I think this is really cute. Um, it's definitely not for me but I just wanted to talk to you guys about it in case anyone was interested. Now the Nordstrom anniversary sale is coming up. It goes from July 20th through August 5th and then there's early access if you have a Nordstrom card. They usually do some like fun exclusive things for the Nordstrom anniversary sale. Personally I'm not planning on picking anything up as far as beauty products go. Sometimes they have some cool stuff though like when it comes to apparel and like shoes and stuff. Everything that you need to gear up for fall. So I might have my eye on it for other things but there wasn't anything in like the beauty section that really like caught my eye. I know I purchased my dry bar hair straightener from the Nordstrom sale last year and that was a really good buy so if there's something like beauty deal wise that you have an eye on I would totally recommend but there's nothing really that I want. Now this I was so excited when I saw this Swear By It palette by NYX. It's so beautiful you guys. When I saw the initial picture when it popped up on trend mode I was like oh my god did Viseart come out with a new palette? because it had that similar like layout of a Viseart palette and yeah it's so freaking stunning. There's 40 cool and warm tone shades from chocolatey browns and deep teals to oranges, mustards, yellows. I mean it's so so stunning right? But I've never had really good luck with NYX eyeshadows. I used to shop them at NYX brand when I was in college and I didn't have you know as much disposable income as I do now so I used to make their makeup work but their eyeshadow formula was never my favorite so I you know I'm so attracted to this palette but I just feel like even for $35 I would rather take that $35 and put it towards a more expensive palette than buy a $35 palette and never end up using it again after I'm done reviewing it you know so yeah I'm gonna pass on that palette but I think it's beautiful gosh I I just can't believe how gorgeous that is so it looks like Paris Hilton is launching a new luxury skincare line I mean it seems like you know the prices do vary there is like stuff that's $29 there's stuff that's $75 there's stuff that's $115 now obviously I haven't tried this stuff but personally I wouldn't really want to support somebody like Paris Hilton so I'm gonna stick to my Sunday Riley skincare but let me know if you guys are interested in that now Huda is coming out with a line of setting powder she's doing eight different shades at $34 and I know a lot of people are really 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 excited about this launch personally for me I'm going to be passing on this like I said earlier I'm really in love with the hourglass setting powder I bought so I don't need anything else right now now it looks like Laura Lee is coming out with another new palette she is coming out with a palette called like a boss and they did a sneak peek and it features an orange shade and a yellow shade. I feel like all the summer palettes include a yellow, an orange, some blues. Those are the colors everyone's going with. We saw the Thirsty palette. We saw the Manny MUA Life's a Drag palette. The Summer Vibes palette from Gimme Gold Cosmetics. The new ones from Colourpop. As well as um, 
the flamingo palette they all seem to have a very similar theme it's so funny it's like they talked about it and decided to make the palettes just different enough where we still felt like we could justify buying all of them but they kind of still look the same so I have a feeling that Laura Lee's new palette is also going to be very similar to those shades and honestly she's not a brand I want to support I don't even know why I'm talking about this palette right now because I just don't understand how she keeps pumping out new palettes new palettes it really feels like they're trying so hard to capitalize on this fame that they have that it might not last forever that YouTube might not last forever and I get it you know people say like don't put all your eggs in one basket but the way she's coming out with eyeshadows it's like holy crap like is it really take that long to make eyeshadow I don't think so I mean like these brands are coming out with eyeshadow palettes like every week it seems like so it's a little bit crazy I don't know what do you guys think about that that she's coming out with her third eyeshadow palette in one year like I don't know that seems intense right so this collection I'm so excited for Sila is coming out with a vivid and vibrant collection and there's six new vivid and vibrant shade shades of shimmer and glow liquid eyeshadows as well as um, some eyeshadows I'm not interested in the eyeshadows they have like a split pan um, the swatches look very meh. like if you see the photo that Trend Mood posted I'm like uh, I don't think anyone's gonna want those but I'm really excited about the shimmer and glows I have two of them I don't use them too much but I just couldn't say no to the green shade I think it's called Jade something and I already ordered it as soon as I saw that it was available on Sephora I ordered it because come on like I love green so I wanted to see like if it was a vibrant green if I could um, wear it on my lids so very excited love that formula that shimmering glow and glittering glow is definitely like Stila's like most standout product like I don't know anything else that I own from them except those eyeshadow formulas so good for them that they came up with something innovative like that. okay guys so we of course have to talk about color pop summer collection i don't know how ColourPop manages to plan out their year and have a new launch pretty much every week like it's insane i wish i had a separate like calendar where i just kept track of new things that are launching from ColourPop because i swear every week I have something written down on Thursday or Friday coming out from ColourPop. It is insane. Nobody can keep up. I was really excited though when I saw sneak peeks of these eyeshadow palettes because I was like, please don't make us wait for them. Please don't make us wait for them. And they like started sneak peeking them on Monday. And by like Tuesday, I knew they were coming out on Friday. And I was so freaking excited for these two. So they did like a summer and sea theme and they're doing some ultra bottom lips which I like them but I didn't want to buy more because honestly I half the time only wear liquid lipsticks I never remember to reach for anything else and I didn't want any of their highlighters because God knows I have too many highlighters also I don't really like the super shock highlighter formula I prefer a powder highlight that like melts into your skin but the eyeshadow palettes were gorgeous and so I definitely wanted to pick them up so I just picked up the bundle where you could just quickly click and add both to your cart at once. I love how vibrant both palettes look even though it's a warm neutral palette that one red shade oh my gosh I like really hope it's as vibrant as it looks in the photos because I just live for colors like that and also the blue one even though it's just you know three pops of blue I think it's a beautiful palette and for $12 like who can honestly complain and I feel like they're kind of like decent dupes of some of the palettes and the shades that Jaclyn Hill did in the vault so at least we have something to tide us over until Morphe gets their shit together so let me know what do you guys think do you plan on picking those up I already did so hopefully I'll get them like by Monday or Tuesday but we'll see I will keep you guys posted Makeup Forever, I don't know where they decided to come out with this palette, but they came out with the new Glitzy palette. It includes highlighting, sculpt, blush, shades with different finishes for $49. So I think this is nice. Like I said, I do like it when they put all of the things you need to do a makeup look in one palette, but the eyeshadows look very, you know, muted, and I think they're all shimmery, so you're going to have to grab for something else or I guess you could use the bronzers um, in your crease to kind of make a crease color up I don't know it's cute but I don't know that it's gonna work for a lot of different skin tones so 
Personally, I don't plan on buying it, but uh, maybe if you have a skin tone that that works with, you might enjoy it. I don't know. Okay, so we have a sneak peek that Natasha Denona is bringing us a new glow product, and it will be available on July 11th. I am really curious to see what this is. I have a love-hate relationship with Natasha Denona. I hate her eyeshadows, but I have one of her blush and glows, and it's in like the apricot shade and it just oh my god when I put that on my cheekbones are like glowing to the gods and I am such a fan of like peachy blushes right now so I love that guy so if it's more shades of that I'd be really excited it looks like it might be a highlighter she did launch those like humongous highlighting palettes do you guys remember those like a couple of months ago was that this year I can't even remember but those were so expensive and overpriced I hope it's not something like that I hope She's just bringing out, you know, more small things. I, I can't deal with those big ass palettes for like $125. Just too much. It Cosmetics is coming out with this star foundation brush. I don't know. It seems kind of gimmicky. Sometimes they do these for like good causes and stuff, but it's a $30 star shaped foundation brush. Like, if you have that kind of money, like, good for you. I'm just gonna go buy like a Real Techniques foundation brush. Those are awesome. So that's my take on that. Okay, you guys know I don't really like to talk about Kylie on my channel, but this sort of sweet collection, like, I don't know. Didn't she just do a palette full of, like, browns and beiges? And now she just did another palette. Like, I... Like, really? Like, who is buying this stuff? Like, come on. Even if you love Kylie, at this point, you should already have all these shades. Like... I mean, it's like, it's the same, like, Fifty Shades of Beige. Like, I don't even need to be an asshole. I just, I really just don't get it. Like, it's all the same colors. Like, why would you keep buying them? I don't know. I don't know. That's just my take on it. Uh, Too Faced. They did a shade expansion on their Born This Way foundation, which is great. And they also came out with a super coverage, multi-use sculpting concealer. Now, I actually used the Born This Way foundation a couple of years ago, and I liked it. I just, I don't know, I wasn't 100% sold. Like, I liked it, but sometimes I felt like the coverage was very, like, hit or miss, hit or miss. So I wasn't, like, 100% sold enough to repurchase it, so I never did. But I got really curious about this sculpting concealer because it's supposed to be a full coverage concealer. It's $29 and contains 0 0.50 ounces of product, so it is half the size of a foundation, I believe. So I'm excited. I did order it on Sephora, and it should be here either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. And I want to test it out. I'm always on the hunt for a good concealer, so I'm curious to see what the formula for that particular product is going to look like. Other than, that, other than that, you guys know I'm not a huge fan of Too Faced as far as like their eyeshadow palettes and stuff, but the Born This Way foundation and I've also heard good things about their powder that I will try at some point like I said don't need any more setting powders but um, I did have a good experience with the foundation so I'm interested to see how the concealer turns out okay guys so this is hilarious but I bought this palette and I'm a little bit ashamed I don't know what like came over me but I think it's the fact that it's so, so limited edition and the way they do it, like you have to get a special code and then you're in and then it's like so limited edition that people were like pissed because they did the same thing with the Gemini palette and I didn't want the Gemini palette and I don't know what on God's green earth made me want to buy this palette and if you guys haven't figured it out yet, I'm talking about the 27 palette by Melt Cosmetics. This thing was so outrageously priced. I think I paid like almost 60 bucks for it and it looks exactly like the Naked Heat palette by Urban Decay which I didn't even like that palette so I don't know why I thought this was going to be better and you can tell like their swatches look so doctored like I don't know what I was thinking but they came out with the 27 palette in celebration of one of their founders who was turning 27 on the 27th or some shit like that but Oh god, I really hope this palette is good because I paid way too much money for it and I can't send it back, which, oh my god, is scary. And also, like, I used to have a melt stack and I didn't like it, like, I decluttered. So yeah, I'm really hoping this eyeshadow palette rocks my world because if it's not good, I'm gonna be really sad. And then today I was watching the Fancy Face and she was talking about how she was not very impressed with the Gemini palette and my heart just, like, 
broke a little bit, sank a little bit because I'm gonna be really sad if it's if it's not a good palette because I paid so much money for it. <laughs> okay, so what do you guys think about Ofra rebranding? I personally, or repackaging or whatever the fuck they're doing, I was, I was so turned off by this because I saw they did a trip, like an influencer trip, and then I saw like Desi, and was it Katie, and there's like a bunch of influencers, maybe like Nikki Tutorials, um, and I was just like, oh, come on, because Ofra's pricing is so odd to me. Like, they overprice things, and then they offer like a 30% discount if you use a code that is provided by an influencer, and I just don't understand that marketing strategy. Like, why would you price your things so high that it almost makes it inaccessible? Plus, they're an online brand, so it's not like you can really go into a store and swatch their products. So I don't, I don't understand, like, how can you, anyway, I, I mean, shit, I don't know, there, people will buy anything these days, holy crap, I could, like, scrape some dirt off the floor and call it makeup and somebody would probably buy it, so I personally don't understand, I know I've heard really, really good things about their liquid lipsticks and I have, I think, like, one of their highlighters because I got it on like super sale from Ulta when they were doing the 21 days of beauty like a while ago. I don't get it guys. I I think it's so overpriced. I think it's so annoying that they repackaged their shit. Like nobody cared what their packaging was like. I just think they need to be more affordable and then maybe I'd consider trying them. But for right now, I just I just don't get it and I don't want to support that brand. I, I just can't be bothered. So e.l.f. is coming out with a mix to match foundation shade adjuster. And I think this is such a cool idea, you guys, because a lot of people self-tan, a lot of people change shades in the summertime. I actually have the NYX foundation mixers and those are pretty affordable, but these ones are $4 by e.l.f. So if you have problems getting your foundation to match, I would highly recommend checking something like this out because it will save you a lot of money in the long run and uh, it shouldn't totally mess with your formula of your foundation. It should just help you kind of change the color to suit your skin tone, which is a plus. So, this highlighting palette by Glam Glow, oh my gosh. Woof! It's so pretty. I love the packaging. It's so obnoxious. It's bright pink. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I want this. But I'm not going to buy it because I don't need another highlighting palette. I believe it retails for $45. I do like that Glam Glow is kind of, you know, expanding. They're not just sticking to their skincare products, which is good. It's always good to try something new. So I do admire them for that, but I'm going to be passing on this palette. I think it's so cute. I would totally buy it just for the packaging, but I don't have money. So let's just pretend we're not going to get that. Okay, Laura Mercier is coming out with 10 different blush shades. The colors do look very beautiful. She definitely did a lot of like pinky tones. I feel like for the summer, I've really been obsessed with peachy tones and like clementines and citrus and like beautiful oranges. So the pinks are kind of throwing me off, a lot of mauves. I feel like this might be even better suited for the fall time. We don't have a launch date yet, so maybe it is coming out later in the year, personally. I just don't need any more blushes, so I'm going to go ahead and pass on these. So everyone has been talking about the sneak peek of this Tutti Fruity collection that Too Faced is doing, and it is so funny because a lot of people have been joking, saying Angelica and Nyquist totally call this one, and she was right, so good for her, and I'm curious to see what they come out with. It looks like it might be eyeshadow palettes that sparkling pineapple and whatever the one underneath it definitely look to be like their tin eyeshadow palettes. So yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully Too Faced will blow us out of the water. I'm excited to see what they come out with. So. so Lush Cosmetics or Lush, I don't know what they're called actually. Lush is coming out with 40 different shades of foundation. This packaging looks very, very interesting. There is definitely a great range of colors and it says it's a buildable medium coverage made with luxurious oils and waxes to give your skin the dewy post-facial glow in warm, cool, and neutral undertones. So I'm not like a huge fan of Lush and I do think they're a bit pricey. Now, I heard everyone talk about Flesh Beauty. They finally launched on Ulta this week, I believe, and everyone's just been kind of grossed out by the names of their products and things like that, and I totally understand. I mean, it is a little disturbing, but I like the overall concept being that, you know, Flesh isn't just that one color in the Crayola box. I think that's pretty cute. Personally, I'm just not really interested in any of these products I saw 
Puffin's wife had ordered the foundation stick and it was so tiny, you guys. She was like holding it in her, like the palm of her hand and she's like, what is this? It looked like the size of this. This is like my little remote where I turn my camera off and on when I'm filming. It looked so small and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I didn't buy that. Um, plus, I do have one like foundation stick and it's the hourglass one. And that one works so well for me. I don't need to buy any more found stick foundations. I'm totally glad I, like, I skipped that and I'm interested to hear Puffin's wife's comments on that particular launch. No. Milani finally released this limited edition Gilded Desires face and eye palette. I think this is so beautiful. I wanted to buy it because I had a 20% off coupon from Ulta, um, but by the time I placed my order, this thing sold out, which I totally took as a sign that I did not need any more palettes to review. I do this a lot, guys. I always buy palettes and I'm like, oh, I'll review it, so it's fine. And at, I'm at this point where I have so many eyeshadow palettes, like it's ridiculous. So I'm going to try and not buy anything in July, but I, it's ridiculous. Anyway, I don't know. I think this is beautiful. I think there's definitely a place for this palette in the world right now. If you're on a budget, you don't want to spend too much money. But these are such like great everyday shades, if you ask me, and the price is right. So if you do get a chance, definitely pick it up and tell me what you think. I haven't... I tried their all matte palette that they have available at like Walmart. I didn't like love it. It's the one that looks like the Modern Renaissance. I ended up taking that back and I've seen the other one too that has the shimmer shades and I've heard such good things about Milani's eyeshadows but I'm like I just have too many eyeshadows so I'm just gonna hold off on that but it looked really cool. Okay here is something I am so excited for Bite Beauty. Now keep in mind I don't even like lip glosses. But this is really like piquing my interest. Bite Beauty is coming out with six French press themed lip glosses and they are going to have a coffee scent. So they have six shades. There's going to be flat white, vanilla latte, salted caramel, dirty chai, French press, and black coffee. I'm really interested in the shade dirty chai. I think that's going to be a beautiful color. And yeah, hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on it on Sephora. I don't want to order it on Bite Beauty or anything like that. But yeah, it looks really cool. I don't know. I just love that theme. And I love that they did a spice theme for their Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche lipsticks. They did like a theme of like really cool spice colored like red lips. And I totally want those as well. But I just don't wear lipstick enough to justify buying those lipsticks, like bullet lipsticks. But they look so cool. I'll pop a picture in case you guys want to see what the hell I'm talking about. Okay, so Wayne Goss Cosmetics. I am so excited. I watched his announcement video. I don't watch all of Wayne Goss's videos, but I watch some of them, especially the ones where he talks about technique, because it's always nice to learn new things from a working makeup artist versus a lot of like YouTubers. I mean, this guy has like real life knowledge, which I think is kind of important, but I am so excited that he is coming out with his own cosmetics line. I know it's not gonna happen anytime soon. He kind of explained that it's self-funded, but I actually really want to now pick up some of his eye brushes because he said he is like self-funded with his brush line and everything and I just think that's so cool and I really want to support it. It's very expensive so I might wait until I have a little bit more money. But I just think it's so cool that he did all of that himself and he's not like trying to, you know, be overly flashy. He's all about the makeup and I think that's pretty cool. So let me know what you guys think. Urban Decay is coming out with a lip mousse. Who the fuck knows what that's about? It says it's a liquid to matte lip color, delivers extreme pigmentation, velvety finish, waterproof formula, buildable. You can apply a thin layer for a soft natural effect or build up the intensity for a more intense result. And it is $26 and it looks like they have quite a few shades. I heard a lot of people kind of say that they were kind of dark. And it could be just the picture is like bad quality. Who knows when this got... Oh, it says it's coming out in like August. So there's a little bit of time. Might be good for fall. I personally, like I just said, don't wear a lot of lipstick. So it's not something I'm going to be running out to buy. But, you know, whatever. Okay, guys. So Beauty Bakery is coming out with a highlighting palette. It is called the Milk and Honey Highlighting Palette. And it includes four shades. So it is very cute. Everyone loves Beauty Bakery stuff because the packaging, the theme, it's so gorgeous. It's also a black owned makeup brand. I have both of their eyeshadow palettes and you guys, I have to say I haven't even used the one and the second one I was trying again 
I kind of failed and it kind of fell to the back burner so eventually I will review it for you guys it's the do it for the gram palette but it's nothing like overly impressive I feel like if you have an Anastasia glow kit you have this if you have Huda Beauty like highlighting palette you have this so I don't know I know that there's not that much more to innovate when it comes to highlighter so I think it's just gonna come out to brand loyalty with stuff like this but personally I am not planning on buying it I don't like to buy brands that I can't return from I'm just I'm just gonna come out and say it it is really difficult for me to go ahead and make those purchases like right now I got really burned by the lemonade palette because I got excited I bought it on Dominique Cosmetics website and I was kind of talking about how I wasn't very impressed with it and one of my subscribers commented in one of my swatch video or something saying they were having a problem with some of the palettes because they had wax built up on them because I cannot get the shimmer on my eyes at all it's a horrible formula and I was so disappointed because I'm like Oh my gosh, everyone said her Latte palette was amazing, so I thought, you know, the formula would be the same on the Lemonade palette, and I was so, so disappointed, but apparently the palette I got was also from the Bad Batch, so they said they would be sending me a new one, um, but I never got tracking. I'm hoping it'll come, like, tomorrow that I'll get an email saying they're sending me a new one, but I'm just so, like, disappointed like that. You know, it's like, how do brands keep doing this? How do they keep making these same mistakes with bad batches and things like that? I mean, God's sake, like, if you're selling an eyeshadow palette, like, aren't you, like, opening at least one or two boxes from each batch and, like, swatching them? I mean... It's got to be cheaper to do that than sending out all these palettes and then sending out a second batch of palettes. I don't know. That's personally my opinion as far as being like a small business, like person that works for a small business. I just, I don't know how people keep making mistakes like this. It's honestly crazy to think of the stuff that the beauty industry can get away with it because it's not regulated. Um, it's unreal. I just, I feel bad for consumers to be very honest. Okay, here's something I'm really excited for. Beautylish is now carrying Smith Cosmetics. I've heard so many good things about Smith Cosmetic brushes as well as the brand Delium Tools. Actually, I want to do a video just talking about like my brush wish list because there's so many cool brushes I want to try. Like the Sonia G ones that Terra Babies talks about. Wayne Goss, like I had mentioned earlier. Oh my gosh, there's so many good brushes that I don't have. Like, ugh. So anyway... They are now being sold on Beautylish.com. I think I'm going to get some, but I did recently place an order for Beautylish, so I'm going to wait, and uh, maybe once I pay that off, I'll get the Smith brushes, but I think those are selling really fast, so they'll probably all be gone by the time I'm prepared, but that's okay. I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. I do have a lot of brushes, so I'd like to work myself through some of those before I buy more. Now they finally launched the MAC Aaliyah collection. I'm going to sound like a total doofus when I say this, but I am like, I like listening to music, but I'm not like a diehard like music person. You know, some people are just so good at like the name of the song, the artist, the year it came out, like all of this stuff. And I'm like, mm, girl, I don't know any Aaliyah songs. Like I probably will if I heard one and I could just like literally say like, hey Siri, play songs from Aaliyah. And maybe like, oh, she heard me. Nope, we're good. Don't, I don't need help. <laughs> anyway, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, this collection, like, I can kind of see, like, the vibe, like, the throwback vibe, but not overly impressed, and I used to be so hard for, like, MAC limited edition collections, but I'm done, you guys. I am done with all that stuff, and so... I'm going to be passing on that, but I feel like I already talked about the new Peppergrass, like, highlighter stuff, um, but let's talk about it really quick. I did pick up this, uh, the highlighting palette. I actually have it. It's the palette I am wearing today. I didn't go too ham with it, but, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful highlighting palette. It does remind me of our eyeshadow formula, like, the big palettes. I want to try and highlight with the eyeshadow and see if it's similar, because then I don't really understand why I bought the palette but Sephora was being shady I feel like June was the month of like 
all kinds of shady things happening in the beauty community but basically you paid $68 for the highlighting palette and then I got an email from Sephora saying that they had like overcharged for the palette and the palette price was $50 so now instead of refunding me they were going to give me a credit on my Sephora account for $18 which I thought was ridiculous. I know some people have called and gotten their money refunded. I haven't seen the credit. I think a lot of people haven't even seen the refund yet so God knows what's happening there. Personally I feel like I just gave Sephora for an $18 loan which I'm not happy about because I did not consent to that shit. Hopefully we can all get our money back because I don't know I feel like I'm gonna buy something for $18 so I really shouldn't complain but I just feel like that's not okay like you cannot do that like can you like I don't fucking know guys. So the solo look which is a brand that does also like the you know copyrighted stuff they did a grease palette which I heard was not very good Looks like their next one's going to be a Beverly Hills 90210 theme. I never actually got into the 90210 show. I did watch the new 90210 that they had on Netflix, I think. Am I getting my shows mixed up? I don't know. Anyway, I'm not getting it, but, you know, I'm sure some people are. They're already sneak peeking for holiday, guys. I can't even believe it. But Anastasia Beverly Hills is going to do a Moroccan vibe for holiday 2018. So... I'm interested to see what that will be about. It should be interesting. They're doing a lot of like shimmers and like the outfits, like the wardrobe for the shoots look very, you know, um, opulent. And so it'll be interesting to see if these pictures even have anything to do with it or if somebody like is leaking the wrong information. Who the fuck knows? So it but looks like Hourglass is coming out with some new new. So yeah, they're coming out with some metallic sparkly it just looks like you know um, eyeshadows in a pot form we've seen those by Tarte Charlotte Tilbury I'm sure there's a bunch of others that I'm forgetting but you know Hourglass has a special place in my heart because a lot of their products are usually hits not so much misses so I'm interested to see what those will be like I personally don't like to buy pot, pot eyeshadows or single shadows at this point. I feel like I'm definitely a palette gal. I probably won't buy them, but I think it's cool that they're coming out with something like that. Okay guys, so I feel like I already talked your ear off about everything I saw on Trend Mood. There are a few things that I just saved to my Instagram because not everything that is new is on Trend Mood, which is kind of a huge flaw in the system in my personal opinion. But I do try to save them on my phone. so. Let me go ahead and grab those new launches as well. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the new Grandiose palette by Ace Beauté. Now, I wasn't actually following them on Instagram, which I'm kind of bummed about. So I don't know if this was their first palette ever, but I have this palette, which is called the Quintessential Palette by Ace Beauté. And I think the quality on this palette is amazing. Now I'm going to post a picture of the Grandiose palette and I'm honestly kind of shocked because it looks so similar to this guy. So I don't know. I mean, it's an 8 pan palette versus this one, which is a 16 pan. And I just don't get it. It feels like they just moved some of the shades around and made a new palette. So I think that's a little bit sketchy. This is good quality. So if there isn't a huge price difference, I would just go with this one. But I was really weirded out when I saw Angelica talk about the Grandiose palette because I thought it was so similar. Also, I do want to show you guys, I have the Zuri palette. And one of the reasons I didn't want to buy the Zuri palette is because I thought it was so similar to the Ace Beauté palette. And when you think of like private labeling and stuff, it really freaks me out. And now that I'm looking at them side by side, holy shit, they're so similar. Like I feel like I conned myself here. So if you have this one, don't buy this one. If you have this one, you probably don't need this one. I'll probably have to remember to compare the swatches and stuff when I start playing with this and reviewing this. The Quintessential palette. I already have a review up on my channel, but yeah, I thought it was so weird that they came out with this new palette and Angelica was talking about it and I was like, but that looks exactly like the palette they already have. So what's up with that? Somebody please explain that to me. I don't know. I don't think they're like a bad brand or anything, but I just thought that was odd that it looked exactly the same as the palette they had before. She also mentioned that they're doing this new collection. It's like a collab. And it looks cool. It is a collab with a YouTuber, I think she said. And if these, like, color schemes are an indication to what's inside those palettes, like, 
I'm ready. So I started following them on Instagram. I cannot freaking wait for those guys to show up at my door. Now, Sydney Grace, you guys know I'm obsessed with Sydney Grace, is doing a sale in July. They're calling it Christmas in July. And it's going to start in about two weeks. So I would just go ahead and follow them on Instagram if you guys aren't already. Uh, because that looks to be like it's going to be lit. And I just cannot wait. Um, I have a video talking about their cream eyeshadows. I love them. And they're going to come out with new shades during the sale. So I'm so, so excited. Dragon Child Palette is now available, I believe, for you to order. I did the pre-order and they said my palette should ship this week, so I'm hoping it'll be here. This palette is going to be definitely taking me out of my comfort zone. It's not shades that I gravitate towards, so I'm really excited to see it in person and see what it's going to look like. Blush Tribe is coming out with a little quad. They are doing some really fun bright shades. This quad looks amazing. I wish Blush Tribe was sold in the United States. You do have to order from the UK. It's not terrible. I think what I'm going to do is just wait until I try the Blossom palette because I bought their Blossom palette, you guys, and I've just been so busy and like all these other summer palettes launch that it's just been like sitting in my, you know, pile of stuff to try. I also have the Malika palette from them. So I bought two of their palettes and I'm just going to wait. I I think these are beautiful, but God knows I don't need any more eyeshadow, so I'm just going to shout them out here if you guys are interested. I think this is really, really cool. And she's always talking about influencers. She's always sharing people's pictures. I think she's a really cool person, the owner, and I love what they're doing for the community. So I just wanted to give them a shout and show you guys this palette in this video. So I haven't, you know, been following the sauce box for very long, but it looks like they're coming out with a... A uh, Nocture palette. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'll try and post the name right here. Um, it's definitely not my vibes, but it looks cool. I like their packaging and stuff. I have their Mermaid palette. And again, it's an all shimmer palette, so I can't speak about their entire, you know, collection of shadows. But it does say they're a vegan and cruelty-free brand. I think this will be cool. You guys might want to check it out if you're into these shades. Personally, not my vibes, and like I said, again, I'm trying not to buy shit, so I'm not going to do it, but it looks cool. Here is a sneak peek that got my lady bits a little bit tingly. This is the Stroke Cosmetic Arcana palette. Uh, I'll put the name here again, and it's going to be coming out in winter of 2018. They're doing 12 shades, and they gave us a tiny sneak peek of five of the shades. Holy God, you guys, these jewel tone shimmers, oh my God, they look so beautiful. I'm so excited to see this whole palette revealed, so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. I think that's going to be a good palette for the winter time. I'm really excited for this Vivid Pigments eyeshadow palette, or whatever the heck they're calling it, and Vivid Pigments and Shadows palette situation that colored rain is sneak peeking they showed a picture of the packaging and uh, this better not be like the melt debacle where they showed like these like crazy colors for the she's in party stack that they came out with which everyone was thinking was gonna be like all these cool neon shades and there was just like 50 shades of coral so I'm hoping that this is gonna be like a bright palette from them like something like the electric palette I'm excited. You guys know I'm a, a big fan of Colored Rain. I have a lot of their shadows. The Single Shadows, the Queen of Hearts palette, Celebrate the Beauty, whatever that obnoxious palette is. And their formula is good. So I am so excited to see what the hell is inside that packaging. Now this is a brand that is not available in um, the US either. This is Zoeva. You do have to order it on their international site. Um, and it's expensive. <laughs> like. I think you get free shipping at $75, and I actually have both of these palettes in the full size, but they're doing mini, like, travel size versions of two of their famous palettes. And I think this is such a brilliant idea because it's such a compact situation. I like the color story. Small palettes are the trend right now, so I think it's really cool. If you've been wanting to try these, I think you might as well do it now. Okay guys, I feel like I just filmed the longest Will I Buy It video of my life, so I hope you guys caught all of those new releases I talked about. 
Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I will catch you in a future video. Thank you for watching. Bye guys.